Hello! In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating drivers with Reface. In the new version of Reface, version 1.2, there's some driver creation tools in the graph editor, so let's go ahead and open that up. Now in the properties toolbar, there is a new sub-panel called Reface Driver Tools. We'll go ahead and switch over to the drivers mode in the graph editor. And selecting the head, you can see that we have some shape keys, some corrective shape keys to uh, account for some of the lack of depth information in the in the uh, motion capture data. And we also have materials, both Blender and Cycles materials. I'm going to actually disable Cycles nodes, return to Blender render. And you can see that we have some textures. I've got a bump texture on the right side of the forehead and the left side of the forehead. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do first is look at creating shape key drivers. I already have some drivers set up for the brow squeeze, for the, the bringing the lip corners back on a smile, and I'm going to go ahead and set up a driver for the lip narrowing. <clears throat> now if you look at the, uh, the driver tools panel in the graph editor, you, first thing you'll see is that you need to select an object. Now the, the object that uh, is you know default selected is um, just is some, some random object that's been returned to this list and I need to select an object that actually has either shape key information or image texture data. So I'm going to set the type of driver that we're going to create to shape key and I need to select this head object and uh, first thing that I'm going to do is select the shape key that we're going to be creating the driver for. So we're going to create a driver for the corrective lip narrow shape on the left side. I'm going to create an average value type of driver and I'm going to use the Z location in the local space of the bone. Now the bone that I'm going to, I'm sorry, not the Z location, the X location. The bone that I'm going to use is this lip corner bone right here. Uh, you can see that it's already constrained to a bone, I'm sorry, to a, to a marker, so that when I play it back, it moves. But if I try to move it in the viewport, it's not going to move. So what I need to do is either unconstrain it so that I can see where it's going, or just use these location values. Because even if I can't move it in the viewport, if I move it, it will actually retain this location information. It just won't have moved from its location uh, visually. <clears throat> so resetting this, it will pop back to its original location. Um, what I'm going to do is grab this bone, bring it over into the mouth by maybe about this much, a little bit more than that. So I'm going to copy this value because I'm going to use this on the other side as well. So I've control seed that. And now that I have my driver settings set up, I'm going to create the driver. It looks like it has created the driver successfully. I'm going to reset this location. And now, if I play it back, then at some point, it's going to, let's see here, be right there. It's moved in a little bit. I'm going to look at the shape key here, and you can see that it is influencing the shape key. I may be, I may need to do this a little bit more drastically to get a little bit more movement. Um, what that's contributing is actually some forward movement um, of the lips here. So there you go. And I'm going to do this on the other side as well. I'm going to use the same value, but I'm going to actually invert this value because you can see that the location of this bone on the positive axis is this way, on the negative axis is in toward the center of the mouth. So I'm going to use the negative, uh, the inversion of this value. I want to set the shape key to the narrowing uh, corrective lip shape on the right side using the X location, average value type, and the local space. I'm going to create the driver for this shape key as well. I'm going to reset this location. And if I select the mesh, you can see that this driver is influencing this corrective shape key as well. Right here, you can kind of see this, the effect of this. There you go. So you're getting some, some sort of pursing of the lips as the, 
as the uh, those bones go inward. So even though these are not actually moving, even though their location isn't moving as um, as the markers are, are moving this bone around, in its local space, this and it actually includes the um, the effect of constraints. So its its local space is actually changing. So um, that is able to drive these shape keys. Now in the same way, we can drive image textures as well. And you can use cycles nodes or blender nodes. Um, or I'm sorry, blender materials. First thing I want to do is select the material that I'm going to be uh, creating a driver for. And the next thing that we need to do is set the data path. Now the way that you do this, for instance in Blender, is to go to the, the Blender material. I'm going to be driving the normal factor. I'm going to right click, copy data path, and you can see that this is called uh, the texture slots um, dot normal factor. This is this is the uh, the internal data path of, of this property. I want to go ahead and copy that here. I'm not going to be using cycles node, so I'm going to keep that disabled. I'm going to actually use a scripted expression for this one, and I'm going to uh, multiply the uh, the value of the driver output by you know a given number, maybe a uh, point zero two five. It's I needed a pretty uh, pretty subtle effect. If I drive this all the all the way to one, then it's going to give me a uh, an over, sort of overblown bump effect. So this is the right bump uh, on the forehead. It's the right bump texture, and so I'm going to drive this with the right brow inner bone. Uh, maybe, maybe I actually want to drive this with the with the center one. I'm going to use the Z location in this case because this moves on its local Z axis in this way. And the positive axis, so I'm going to bring this guy up maybe about maybe about there. I'm going to copy this value. Uh, I'm going to create the driver. Let's reset that. With this guy, I'm going to copy that location over to that. We'll return to the textures. For the left bump, I'm going to copy the data path of that normal factor. I'm going to paste that right there. And then selecting this bone with its Z location modified, I'm going to create the driver. And now we can see skipping ahead toward the end here, there's there's a point at which these bones go upward quite a bit, and we can look at the texture and see whether it's being driven. That's maybe a little too subtle. I wanted it to be a little bit more drastic than that. Um, but you can see that this is being driven. You can see that that texture is being driven by these bones. So, uh, you can actually modify these just a little bit. We can maybe set this value to, or actually I think what we'll just do is modify the expression. We'll just multiply it by, instead of 0 0.025, maybe 0 0.1. Oops, not mean to do that. 0 0.1. And this one we will also modify, multiply it by 0 and update dependencies. Those drivers should be working a little bit better now. There we go, getting a little bit. And if we do a quick render here, we've got some border rendering set up. We can see that these bump maps are being subtly driven. That's maybe too subtle. Let's let's try this again, maybe 2.5. I think the initial value that I had it at was actually was actually probably best. So you can see that this has changed the value. And that's pretty ugly. 
Uh, this is a this is a very slapped together texture, but I just wanted to use it to demonstrate how um, how textures on the left side and the right side can be driven independently to uh, to get some increased realism. Again, this is not terribly increased realism because I just sort of slapped this texture together. Um, and uh, if if you wanted to add textures, for instance, like crow's feet on the sides of you know the eyelids, you could do that um, by driving the the uh, the normal texture with cheekbone markers. You could uh, you could alternatively add some uh, mouth wrinkles or you know wrinkles in the cheek area by driving the textures with with these bones. Uh, the possibilities are endless, and it, it'd be very interesting to see how much uh, realism could be achieved by simply driving a lot of different textures on each side of the face with uh, with these bones. Now we can create drivers for cycles nodes as well. All we have to do is enable this, and when we copy the data path, we just need to copy the data path of a cycles node property. So let's switch over to cycles. I'm going to use a handy little operator I have for enabling the cycles nodes. So switching over to compositing, we can see that I have some, I have the, the same bump maps or wrinkle maps um, created for this cycles the cycles node setup I'm bringing them into a bump node and I'm averaging them which I don't know if this is actually the greatest setup this is not something I do terribly often but this is one way to drive this and I've got these going into uh, sort of an older version of um, of this, uh, this skin shader so I am going to be driving the strength. Copy data path. I'm going to be driving the strength of this bump node. I'm going to leave the distance where it is because that's about the, the most uh, the most influence I want it to have. So I'm going to quick quick render of this. You can see that uh, this is already being influenced. Looks a little bit better in cycles. <laughs> So I'm actually going to set this to zero. Set this to zero. Uh, let me bring this in a little closer. Do another quick render and see what this looks like without any influence. Okay. So copying the data path of the right forehead bump map. I'm going to switch back over, and I can I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And I'll paste this data path in now that I have cycles nodes enabled. And you can see that this value is uh, is actually an input for a cycles node. So using the same expression, I'm actually going to leave this. Actually, I'm just I'm not going to use that scripted expression. I'm going to use an average value in this case. So grabbing this bone. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, the center bone in its local space. Bringing it up to about that point and copying that value, I am going to create the driver, resetting that location. And go ahead and punch this in for the location of that bone. Now I need to switch back to my uh, compositing window and copy the data path. And Switching back over here, create the driver, resetting this location, let's see, oh, looks like this one is, and I'll copy that data path, let's try that again. Looks like I need to, I think I need to rename this. Uh, let's see, right bump. I'll call this one left bump. Oop. Copy the data path again. Let's try.
try this again. Go ahead and delete this driver from here. This is the tricky part about these nodes, is that they rely on naming to find them. So let's go ahead and reset this guy maybe to about there. I'll copy that value. We'll create the driver. Reset that location. Paste that value. Copy the data path. Paste that in there. Create the driver. Now we can see that these are being driven by these bones. And as we skip to the end, let's find a place where he's raising the eyebrows. You can see that these are these values are being driven by these by these eyebrow bones. If we skip to the beginning, we can see again that these are at an influence of zero. Stop that render. And if we skip to the end, find a place where he's raising the eyebrows and their influence is at one. Then we can see that these maps are being driven by the raising of the eyebrows. So that's a fairly simple way of doing that. And that is the essentials of creating drivers with ReFace.